Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're at the Lake Hollywood Park up here at the Lake Hollywood Estates Homeowners Association. And to my right here, I have Sheila Irani, who is the president of this community. Hello, Sheila. Hi, Charles. I've welcomed you here because about a year ago, Recreation and Park, they planted five jacarandas. And in that time now, two of them look like they're about to die. And last year, when you and I worked together in the playground area, we had four beautiful rosewoods that were also dying, and then we applied the Ivy Organic and mulched them, and now they're blooming and beautiful. So I want to make sure that we save these trees before we lose them. For sure. I've noticed a lot of issues in regards to the recent planting of the jacarandas behind me. Um, we're going to view those together, and I'm going to um, invite the camera person to come and follow us. Um, and we'll spot those issues. We're going to heal them and treat them with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard. Um, and I'll explain how the products um, work. And we also brought three colors so we can try the different colors so that people can see um, just the contrast on whether it doesn't necessarily just have to be white. You can also use more of an aesthetically um, neutral colors such as brown and green um, to accomplish the same thing. And it's a phenomenon known and historically tested and proven method of what's generally called in the gardening world is whitewashing. Mm -hmm. um, whitewashing was, you know, has been performed by gardeners for hundreds if not thousands of years to basically help keep their plants cool from the summer sun as well as insulated from the winter freeze as well. Right. So it kind of serves that dual purpose. Right, and we're getting a lot of sun this year, so. So here we are at the beginning of what was one day going to become the Jacaranda Forest. This is the first of five trees and unfortunately this one is being diagnosed as dead and beyond repair. There is no life within the entire tree and what I'm looking at is, I'm taking a look at the stems, you'll notice that all of the moisture within this plant is lost, any attempts at growth has failed and there's severe damage near the base of the plant. I don't know if you're, you're going to be able to I'm, capture this, I, you know, but we're going to zoom in on other trees behind us. Practically every single jacaranda tree within this forest has girdling happening around it. And typically when we talk about the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard product, we talk about rodents girdling your plants, but it could also be the mechanical injury caused by these weed whackers and lawnmowers that are racing through the park and, and brushing against these. Even though you see these three large stakes protecting it, it appears as if the damage was caused before these stakes were installed. And you'll notice practically every single tree has girdling, you know, that's basically damaging not just the bark, but the underlying cambium tissues that traverse the waters through the xylem and phloem, which are the vessels underlying the bark. All of that is damaged, which is ultimately damaging its ability to succeed and thrive here at the park. Let's check out some other trees here. So this here is the second most stressed tree in the Jacaranda Forest in this corner of the park. Um, this plant, unlike the first one that we saw where we determined to no longer be salvageable, this one actually has some growth but it is struggling tremendously. When you go to prune a tree, um, whether it be spring or summer and you open the canopy where there's this much light coming in, or you newly install a plant where it's got very limited foliage to shelter and keep the lower branches and tree trunk cool, there is now an excess amount of sunlight that's cooking and causing first, second, and even third degree burns, which is where the underlying cambium tissues are also getting damaged. I'm hoping the camera will capture some of the burn that's happening on these branches over here. You can see the discoloration and the cracks in the bark, and all of this is leading to further desiccation by the plant, in addition to damage to the underlying cells below the bark. And that's happening throughout the entire tree. And if you come down towards the base, what we're gonna end up doing now is we're gonna remove some of this sucker growth so we can focus on these three branches so we'll end up having this multi-trunk beautiful jacaranda tree but we don't want any of the water and minerals and resources going to these other sucker growth that's down below so this is what we're going to be doing next and um, what i've got here in front of me is a product made here by kellogg's this is a locally made um, i believe it's distributed out of carson um, which is near long beach and they have this product which is an organic compost 
which will be used to enrich the soil. I'm gonna share a couple other tips um, with you as well as we visit the other trees. So here we are now next to a third jacaranda tree. And again, the ground cover, this lawn's been pulled back a couple of feet. We've added some compost around the tree as well. And now the next step is to pick a fertilizer. I've got here a product that I, I found made by EcoScraps. It's got a balanced 555, which means 5% nitrogen, 5% phosphorus, 5% potassium. And the goal is we've got a nice balanced fertilizer and being organic, it will not burn. And the alternative is to find something like this, which is something you'll typically find, you know, as a good lawn fertilizer, 15, 15, 15. But if you take a look at it here, you can tell that this is a chemically derived fertilizer. Um, the organics, on the other hand, this one here made by EcoScraps, and there's a lot of other products. You can, um, Kellogg's I know makes a, a, an organic line. So using an organic fertilizer, what it'll do is it'll feed the soil biology. It'll feed the earthworms, the beneficial nematodes, the beneficial bacteria, the beneficial fungi, and the list continues. Organic fertilizers feed the soil, which in turn provides the elements that the plants otherwise need. By adding a chemical fertilizer, what it'll in fact do is harm the soil biology. It can kill the earthworms, it can kill the beneficial bacteria, it can kill the beneficial fungi. And at the end of the day, by, by doing things organically as well, by having those beneficial bacteria and by having that beneficial fungi, those microorganisms are making the antibiotics also for the soil to help control diseases such as root rot. So another important reason to stick with organics, um, and another point I just want to add real quick is, your chemical fertilizers, when you add it, a lot of research will substantiate the fact that the majority of it, and sometimes as much as 75% of chemical fertilizers end up in your storm drains and run off into lakes, rivers, and streams, and ultimately the ocean. Whereas your organic fertilizers, it's more likely to improve the soil condition, prevent erosion. Again, it's increasing the soil biology and it's working with mother nature. So think twice when you visit your garden center and decide on what type of fertilizer to be adding around your trees. The point I wanna make with this particular jacaranda tree, again, and it seems like every single tree that was installed, and maybe they got a discount on these trees, um, but every single tree was girdled. I don't know if they were planted girdled or if they just happened to get girdled again by the weed whackers, by the lawnmowers. And again, with all of the dogs that are surrounding here, they're po probably mistaking this for their fetch stick and chewing on these trees as well but there's significant damage around all of them. And what we're gonna do next after we feed the trees, and what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take our organic fertilizer. We've already added some compost around the tree, and we're gonna add about a third of this bag around the tree like so. And then we're just gonna mix that in to the top quarter inch to half an inch around the tree. What we're also going to do to help control all of this damage to the trees, we're going to use this product called the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard. Let me bring this a little closer for you. So Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. And it's also registered material for use in organic agriculture. And the way this product works is it has all of these organic ingredients. Many people just use limestone, but this here is derived from iron oxide, limestone, mica, milk, and silica. These are the inert ingredients that help form a better bond that is long lasting and for the purposes of controlling sun damage, whether it be summer sunburn or winter sun scald, one application per year is typically sufficient in most um, growing conditions. And then the active ingredients are all of these organic oils. We've got organic castor, organic cinnamon oil, clove oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, and spearmint oil, all that now for natural protection against girdling rodents as well as um, boring insects. So one of the questions a lot of people ask is, is this going to help now repel dogs from my tree? With all the urine that this tree is going to be exposed to, offering a protection and any protection is going to minimize the amount of contact the tree is now is going to be with that urine. Um, the urine is going to hit the bark and it's not going to hit the bark, it's going to hit the Ivory Organics product and fall to the soil and hopefully with regular watering be diluted back into the soil. Um, so it will help benefit the plant with that as well. And in regards to the other um, potentially boring insects that can now enter this exposed area, this barkless wood, it'll offer protection until the rest of the bark and the underlying cambium tissues ultimately heal and grow around these exposed now areas. So 
know, there's a little bit of, you know, you've got your dead bark there. I peeled it off over here. Ideally, you can see, like, now it's back to the life. That's the living cambium tissue, which is the living tissues underneath the bark. The bark's considered dead, but the cambium tissue is the living tissue that eventually will grow over all this dead wood. So all of this could come off, see, and there's the life. And the life will now grow over, and it'll grow with ease. And we're just going to lightly scatter that around. And then the last step, which we talked about, was the importance of mulching and adding a good layer of wood chips. And I picked this up here at the um, Griffith Park here in Los Angeles. They offer this wood mulch for free. We're going to add a good two to three layer cover just like so and what the wood chips again are going to do is going to help retain moisture especially here we are the first week of August it's going to help when that watering comes through to stay in that root zone it's also going to help offer more nutrients to the plants as this wood chips and the underlying compost and fertilizer break down and again we're doing everything organically and the last step as you can see we're using the ivory organics color green um, to offer the protection against that summer sunburn. Again, it'll be here to offer protection come winter for a winter sun scald. And then all of those exposed areas, this tree also is another girdled tree all around the base. Um, all of that exposed wood is being protected to prevent any boring insects from entering, as well as um, the continuation of that activity. Further, by creating this berm, we're gonna be advising the gardeners in this area to stay clear of the trees. Do not bring that weed whacker anywhere near. Do not bring those lawnmowers um, anywhere near the tree. So this here is going to protect the root zone to prevent any further damage to that base of the tree. So here we are now with our newly painted and in color white Ivory Organics Jacaranda tree. And to my left here is Justin, who is, um, I know Ivory Organics now has over 17,000 subscribers with daily views between five and 10,000. But before all of this, there was Justin. While I was teaching here in the um, Los Angeles area, Justin was my first attendee and my consistent attendee with all of our garden classes and all of the um, innovative cutting edge topics that we try to discuss um, and also beautification within our community and just wanted to give special thanks to Justin as being, I call him my first subscriber and my first fan and um, it's just been awesome watching you grow over the last five years and yeah. thanks for joining us here at the Hollywood Park today. No problem. So um, out of curiosity, what grade are you in now? Uh, I'm going into 10th grade. And let's see if um, hopefully your goals happen, but do you know what you want to be? Uh, probably, a, they're kind of different, but like a firefighter and an astronomer. So a firefighter slash astronomer. So we're going to revisit this video in the next five or ten years and we're going to see um, hopefully that you've accomplished both, both of those things. Uh, so keep up the good work. It's been awesome working with you and, and watching you grow up. Thanks, Justin. And so I have here three um, publications by these universities that I want to share with you. One of them is by the University of California, a second by the Oregon State University, and the third by the Fruit Growers News. Um, I've got the publication which I'm going to read to you. Um, but what many of these articles will share is when it comes to the concept of whitewash, and when they discuss whitewash, they're typically talking about a winter sun scald. And that's a phenomenon whereby the daytime temperatures are warm and there's fluids moving within the tree, but the nighttime temperatures are still so cold and also in the freezing temperatures where the fluids are not moving at the root level. So with the lack of flow of fluids at the root and the movement of waters up above, that leads to desiccation and drying out of the stems um, especially on the south facing part of the plant. I'm actually facing right now towards the north. So this, my face is, I'm facing now the south end and that's where most of the light is. So with all of the trees here behind me, it's this side of the plant in the northern hemisphere that are exposed to the most amount of light and thereby most exposed to summer sunburn and winter sun scald. Again, when it comes to whitewashing, um, the protection they're talking about is typically a winter protection whereby um, coating the trees will prevent the vessels, the underlying, as we mentioned earlier, the xylem and the phloem, which are moving the waters and the sugars up and down the tree. Those vessels, just like the plumbing inside your house, when it freezes at night, those vessels are susceptible to rupturing and there could be internal damage to your tree 
even without the obvious cracking of the bark. So again, another reason to pay special attention to your trees and whitewash your trees during those winter months, especially December, January months. Um, what most of these articles also discuss when whitewashing your trees is they talk about using latex paint, typically an indoor latex paint that you can pick up from your paint department, dilute it 50% with water, and use that for painting your trees. If you take a look at the back of the label, you'll notice those warnings that they're carcinogenic, cancer-causing chemicals in there, in addition to all these preservatives, whether they be algicides and fungicides, and all these other things that are gonna allow that paint to last for decades, if not centuries. The bark on the trees, such as the ones we um, coated behind us, are only gonna last so long. Just like the skin on your body, it's eventually gonna slough off, it's gonna fall off, and it's gonna work its way back into the garden and back into the environment. If you're using paint from your paint department, that's gonna last in your soil for decades. Whereas if you do things organically, then you know that you're putting something that when it returns back into the soil, will not harm the soil biology, will not soil the environment, and will not harm the planet the same way these chemical um, products will otherwise do. So the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard product is there to offer customers and consumers in parks such as this one an alternative to using organic formulations for offering your plants that protection from summer sunburn as well as winter sun scald in addition to the value of Ivy Organics being the um, protection against insects as well as girdling rodents. So take a look at this article written by the University of California, the UCIPM, and this specifically addresses the importance of whitewashing your plants. And if you take a look at the first sentence here, and feel free to pause it and read it thoroughly, but I'm just going to highlight some of the important sentences here, and it starts off with, Bark, fruit, and leaves exposed to direct sunlight are injured by heating and drying of tissues, and damage typically is most severe on the south and southwest side of trees. And under the comments and diseases, it talks about newly planted trees that grew with bark shaded in the nursery and trees that are unable to take enough water because of unhealthy roots or inappropriate irrigation are highly susceptible to sunburn. And another important point I want to bring to your attention is under management. It talks about whitewashing young trees routinely at planting, meaning all of your young and new, newly installed plants, fruits, and vegetables can benefit from whitewashing. Um, Whitewash the trunk and major limbs of older trees if they develop sparse canopies or severely pruned, such as when cut back to trunks and grafted with new scion and stump trees. Um, this is also an important principle when you do your summer pruning, as many of us you know, gardeners manage our fruit trees in the orchards in the summer and bringing those back. Once that opens the canopy, that also exp exposes the plant to excessive sunlight and benefits from the whitewash process. So I had a great time with all of these volunteers here, here at the Lake Hollywood Park in Los Angeles, California. If you've enjoyed this educational video, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing down below, you'll be connected to this and all of the other educational gardening videos as they become available. Thanks again for watching. And happy gardening.